The G310 is an N-channel RF amplifier, field effect transistor, and it's specially designed to make an oscillator. And in this video I want to show an oscillator that I've made with this uh, FET, this field effect transistor. The data sheet is on the internet and you can find it everywhere. You see how the circuit was made in real. This is a tuning capacitor parallel to the coil. This is how the coil was made on a PVC tube with plastic insulated wire. Two colors wound in the same direction. Uh, and I'll show more details on um, the schematic. This is the field effect transistor here. And I also made a buffer stage, that's here, made with a BD139, that's an NPN silicon transistor. Uh, a problem with this field effect transistor uh, oscillator is that it is extremely sensitive, and that means that um, it's very hard to couple the oscillator to another circuit, and when you do that, um, the oscillation will stop. It's very uh, sensitive. I can demonstrate it here. Now I touch the coil with one hand and the whole oscillation uh, disappears. And when I touch for instance the tuning capacitor you will also see all kinds of changes in frequency etc. But that um, has to do with the fact if we use a field effect resistor here, um, it has an uh, input resistance on its gate um, from, let's say, 10 mega ohm or so. So the impedance on the gate from the field effect resistor here is extremely high. That makes it extremely sensitive. Here you see how the circuit was made. This is the coil. 16 turns here, 60 turns there wound on the same PVC tube and this is the field effect transistor, the G310, the tuning capacitor and this is the buffer stage and uh, I have already, already sorry, explained why the buffer stage is important. You can operate this um, oscillator on frequencies between 3.2 MHz and 10 MHz and with a lower amplitude you can also operate it up to 13 MHz. These are the pin connections from the FET pin connections from the MPN transistor. Um, the wire with which the coil is made um, has a massive copper core from 0.7 mm and with plastic isolation the diameter from the wire is 1.5 mm. And the ferrite rod that sticks into it is visible here. It has a length from 9 cm. And of course when we take the ferrite rod out the frequency goes up. When we put it in, the frequency goes down. Now I put it in, lower frequency, I take it out, higher frequency. Um, as I have already explained, the buffer stage is necessary to decouple the oscillator from uh, the rest of the electronic circuit, the radio for instance. And I used here a BD139. I always use its as uh, less components as uh, possible, and um, that means that um, there are not so much um, difficult components to uh, handle in this circuit. This, however, is a very critical point here. This is CX. And this capacitor sets the pureness of the sine wave on higher frequencies. 
let's say above 8 or 9 or 10 megahertz. And that has to do with the internal capacitance uh, inside the junction from the NPN transistor. Every transistor, uh, bipolar transistor, has a certain capacitance between its base and its collector. And you can add more capacitance here um, between the junction and you will often find uh, when you do this experiment that uh, this has a very substantial effect on how the uh, transistor amplifies the Sina wave or whatever waveform. For instance when you do this when you want to amplify a square wave you will see that the square wave also gets another wave shape when you add capacitance between the base and the collector. I've done it here to get with this tiny capacitor from uh, 22 picofarad to get a better waveform on higher frequencies. This part of the circuit sets the field effect transistor to its working point it amplifies more or less. It's now a potentiometer, but of course, when all is aligned, take it away and uh, replace it by two fixed value re uh, resistors. Now I'm going to demonstrate how it all works. This is the waveform. Uh, it's also it's always um, difficult to get a pure Sina wave. That's necessary for a shortwave radio. But this waveform is perfect, in my opinion. And this is on 11.8 MHz. I go up now to higher frequency 12.3. And this is the waveform. And now I go down suddenly to a very low frequency. And here you see that the amplitude on all the frequencies also changes. That's always a problem with simple uh, one transistor oscillators. The amplitude must be constant to get a good result uh, with the mix mixer. But of course there are some uh, mixer circuits are not very critical and uh, they can operate with let's say 20% of tolerance. But this amplitude is quite, quite good, I think, though on the higher frequencies it goes down too much. But of course you can make two uh, local oscillators or three to uh, reach, cover the whole frequency band between 4 and uh, 12 megahertz. And of course there are all kinds of circuits, complicated circuits to keep the amplitude uh, perfectly constant, but that's not my aim. I always want to keep it simple. So this is the highest frequency at this moment, 13.5. And now I go to the lowest frequency and that is 4.6. But when I stick the farad rod into the coil we go to a lower frequency, of course, because the inductance gets higher. Now it's 3.37 megahertz, and this is the waveform. And here you can also see that the amplitude changes somewhat when I go to higher frequencies. I think it's not dramatical. And with the ferrite rod stick completely into the coil, we have 9.8 as the maximum frequency from this oscillator. Um, always important when you make an oscillator with a double coil here, sorry for all these movements, the Phase must be correct to make the circuit oscillate. So one of these windings must be reversed in relation to the other one. And when you don't do that, the whole circuit does not oscillate. So that's an advice. 
I've drawn it here uh, precisely as I've made it. So this is the top of the coil and this is the beginning of the coil. Both um, windings are wound together on the same core, on the same form. So here you can see that one of the windings is reversed opposite to the other. Now the circuit again as long as my camera wants to work and doesn't stop suddenly because of a low battery. This is the most elementary um, amplifying circuit that you can have. One collector resistor here and here a 220k resistor between the collector and the base. Input capacitor, output capacitor. I found that this capacitor had to be very low, 12 picofarad, because otherwise the oscillation stopped. So very low. And this capacitor you can change, make it somewhat higher or somewhat lower, doesn't matter much. Depends of course also uh, on where you want to connect the output to. And I took a BD-139 because of its good frequency range. It's a medium power transistor, but it has a good frequency range. You can even make an oscillator circuit with this transistor on higher frequencies. And that means that it is a good current amplification on higher frequencies. All on the breadboard. Of course, when you want to make it in real, make it neat. Uh, short connections, etc., etc.